What's up YouTube, it's your boy Michael, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I do payments on Next.js using Stripe, particularly subscriptions. Now, I'm planning on relaunching my starter kit very, very soon, and I've been revamping a couple of things, and one of the things I revamped and cleaned up was payments, particularly how to do subscriptions in a very efficient and clean way. And that's what I'm gonna be showing with you, showing you today. So, just to give you an example, I have my uh, database here. I'm tracking invoices subscriptions and on the user table they should there should be a subscription id so let's test this out real quick let's go down here let's just put pick this subscription they're all the same random price these are all test prices so i have my card information well my fake test card information i'm gonna hit subscribe let's see what happens let's see if this works okay so it says welcome to the next starter kit let's cook all right, so if I hit access dashboard, it should take me to the dashboard. But now let's look at my database. So notice the subscription ID just popped up on my account username. If we go to subscriptions, we have an active subscription that started this day. This is the plan ID. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, and then let's go to invoices. And then invoices are where I track payments. So $50 was paid. It's successful. So when someone's uh, subscription renews, when the next month, when the next month payment hits, invoices there should be a new field in invoices as well. And here's what's six. So let me go to the Stripe dashboard, and let me cancel the subscription. So if I cancel the subscription, but yeah. So when I check subscriptions, you should see that the status is canceled. So now that we know it works, let's get into the code. So. This is where we're going to start off. There's a component called pricing. I'm just gonna show you the pieces of code that are very important to the functionality. So here, I initialize a Stripe promise, and then I have this function called handle checkout, which gets fired when someone clicks the button. So when someone clicks this button right here, one of these buttons right here, or even on the yearly, this function is what is what fires. So we have handle checkout, price ID and the subscription is passed. And the reason why I have a subscription Boolean that's being passed is because uh, soon I'll be updating uh, the starter kit to handle credits as well. So if the subscription is true, right? If the subscription is true, then that means this is a subscription. If it's false, that means people are buying credits, right? And I will, I already used that for one of the SaaS products I've built, uh, but I'm going to integrate that into starter kit very soon. But for now, it's gonna probably be true. And so what's going to happen is this post request is going to be fired um, and check create checkout session is going to be fired. And I'm going to be passing the user ID, the email, the price ID, and that the subscription is true. And once this goes well, um, I should get a session ID. And then again, I initialize Stripe using Stripe promise. And all I have to do is do a redirect checkout with the session ID. Um, and that all works fine and dandy. But the main logic is this API API payment slash create checkout session. So here what happens is as follows. Um, I pull the information out from the request JSON and then I create a session. I pass the payment uh, method type, uh, line items, metadata, mode. It, it, you have to add mode now in the latest uh, Stripe update. Then the success URL or the cancel URL. So you can actually get pre creative with these cancel and success URL. And one thing I was actually thinking of just doing for fun is if I go to Jennifer Hudson, you a so imagine like someone's payment fails or like like they cancel their thing and then in the cancel page you have this video. Insufficient funds, you ain't got no money. A <laughs> little, little fun uh, side quest, if you will. But anyway, then I return the session ID. And if it's not, so I have a conditional here. If it's not a subscription, then again, this is for credits. Um, this code is not complete yet, but it will be very soon. Now, once this has happened and once the session's created, you make your payment, then Stripe is going to fire uh, to this webhook right here. And basically Stripe is gonna fire to this webhook with all the information I need to track the subscription. So there's a couple things going on here and I've broken these down in functions so they're very in easy to understand, right? So most of the functionality, most of the logic happens in webhooks handler, it probably should be webhook handler, but it is what it is. And there's a couple functions that are called uh, get customer email, 
hunt, handle subscription event, handle invoice event, and handle checkout session completed. So understanding these, let's go through the webhooks handler. We extract the event, and then we have a switch statement here. And essentially we're checking if the event is customer subscription created, then we're gonna fire off handle subscription event. If it's updated, deleted, handle subscription event. If invoice payment has succeeded, then we're gonna handle the invoice event. If the invoice failed, we're gonna handle the invoice event. And when the checkout session is completed, we're going to handle the checkout session completed, right? So let's check out subscription event right here. So first things first, I check, is there, is there a customer email? If there's not, something probably went wrong. And then I construct an object with all the subscription data I need. So the ID, Stripe user ID, status, start date, plan ID, user ID, email. And then I check um, if this uh, subscription event is a delete. So if the type is deleted, then what I'm going to do is I am going to update the status of the subscription to canceled. So remember when I canceled uh, the subscription on Stripe, it updated the status to cancel. So that's what this does. And then if it's not, then it's going to check if the type is created. If the type is created, it's going to insert. If it's not created, then it's going to update, right? Again, and you, this will be reflected on the Superbase database. And then handle invoice event, I construct an invoice data object, and then I insert this in the Superbase database. And if something goes wrong, then if I get an error, then something went wrong. If not, we're just going to return this because again, this event is when the invoice has payment has been successful, right? So we can assume that this is um, like it's gone well. Now, when the handle checkout session is completed, one thing that we do after checking that this is a subscription, again, if it's not, um, it does something else. And this is for credits, uh, not complete yet, but right now we're talking about subscriptions. What it's going to do is it's going to update the invoices uh, table that we just filled in with the email reason being is I don't know why but with the invoice event you actually don't get the customer's email so I make it so that the email is inserted once the session the checkout session is completed because the payments been made um, so the email is updated this is how I handle payments on uh, next.js now this function get customer email essentially you pass it the stripe uh, customer ID and it extracts the email again there are some events where the email is not given to you so I have to use this function to get email so for example when I'm handling the subscription event I need to pass subscription.customer um, to get the customer email so I can track that on my database but that's essentially it that's how I do uh, payments uh, on next.js and here's the most beautiful part is it's free like I've been seeing a lot of starter kits charge two, three hundred dollars, and uh, you know I'm surprised people are paying for it. But nonetheless, um, this starter kit is free. You can check it out. You can contribute to it. You know, feel free if you think you can make it better, go make it better. I think what makes my starter kit different is I generally use this for all the products I build. And every time I build a new product and you know I add something to it or I make it better, I add it to the starter kit. And what's awesome about the starter kit is you get this clean looking landing page. Right. I'm also. Oh, I've also added a blog too. man. I'm really cooking. I'm really cooking. I added a blog that, you know, I had a blog. I added payments. Uh, there's a dashboard for you. It's the best starter kit out there. That's what the streets are saying. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you can, it would mean the world to me if you hit a star on the GitHub repo. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and I will see you in the next video. You have a blessed one. Peace.